Hello and welcome to my talk about the crash reporting service used in LibreOffice. It is a pretty short talk. It's uh, I try to stay pretty much on, on the, the top level side of things. And uh, the talk is uh, structured uh, like you see here, a short introduction as always. Then from uh, the most high level view into a little bit more detail about uh, how QA can help with the whole uh, process and uh, showing some limitations and problems that the current setup has and then it's uh, already time for credits and thanks of prior work and question time. So let's dive in with who I am. I'm Christian Lohmeyer. I'm mostly known by my nick that I use everywhere which is Clov. I work as a release engineer and infrastructure administrator for the Document Foundation and uh, have been with the project uh, since its uh, creation. And before that, I was active in the Open Office Org project. So I have been around long time and always on the infra side or, uh, or build bot side of things. I hang out on IRC also with the Nick uh, Clough. And uh, you see my email here, Clough at Document Foundation Org is another way to contact me. So to the actual uh, topic of the talk, the, the LibreOffice crash reporting service. And uh, on the high level, it's just uh, the, the first question that comes up is why use a crash reporting service? We have uh, a framework of uh, so many automated tests already. For example, we are using a Garrett for, um, for the uh, for review process of patches. And each patch that is submitted to our Garrett system is a uh, uh, tested on all platforms and uh, basically all our built-in uh, checks are run on each test uh, by running the build time tests. In addition to those tests, that we have uh, uh, we are using different static analysis tools, like for example the one provided by Coverity and uh, others like for example the fuzzing tools by Google and those already catch many problems we have in our code without actually hitting the end user. And we have also a pretty extensive set of uh, documents that we run our import and export and re-import, basically round trip tests on, that should uh, uh, cover most of the, the, the problems with our import and export filters and crashes. But of course, uh, even with all the, the systems we have in place, we cannot prevent a bugs from happening and especially cannot cover all hardware combinations and certainly don't have uh, the workflow of each user uh, covered. For example, different order of operations can lead to different results and that's why it's important to have an additional source of information, especially for a uh, disruptive bug like a like a crash that could potentially lead to data loss so uh, that's also of the way what we are using to build our crash reporting service is basically google breakpad everything hinges around the google breakpad project and uh, this is the component that creates the mint dump when libreoffice crashes and is also used to basically unwind that information back at the, the server level. And the benefit of using a tool like Breakpad is that, it is that it allows for uh, decoupling the debug information from the application that you ship. So, uh, and of course, we also need a server to collect the reports. And for that, uh, we have a small Django web application that collects uh, the reports that are uh, coming in and also is uh, used to basically map uh, the, the the stripped down information that is created on the client side, on the end user side, against the full set of debugging symbols we keep on our server so that uh, we have uh, working uh, backtraces and uh, basically pointers to the actual source code after everything is processed. And uh, we also have some integration between the crash uh, reporting side and our bugzilla. So uh, um, both both the systems can cross-link to each other and have pointers to the to the to each other other for further information to provide steps to reproduce to uh, hopefully attach uh, sample documents if those are necessary and yeah 
this is a big help in, in the process as I will go to in a later stage in this talk. So if going a little bit further into detail, what is involved in going a bit little Going a little bit more in detail. Oh, in that's embarrassing. In the whole system. Let's dive in what uh, is actually involved in providing a build so it can be uh, used as a tool for collecting crash reports. So, of course, the first step is to create a build that has the debugging information in the first place. So, if you don't have debugging symbols, even if you have a mini dump, it's more or less useless because. Yeah, yeah, human brains cannot work with pointers and there needs to be a way to, to unmangle this and uh, uh, track it back to actual code functions and uh, uh, files and uh, lines in those files for, for to be useful. So after the build is done with the debug symbols, uh, brake pads, dump symbols, tools, uh, extracts them and uh, uh, basically converts them into a format that is common across the platforms and this then is uploaded to the server and allows the server to 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 unwind the uh, the symbols back to their human readable form basically and uh, the debugging symbols are stripped from the libreoffice that is uh, shipped to the end user so it can be a relatively lean and uh, doesn't have to be bloated just because of the debug debugging symbols of course libreoffice is still a rather large package, but if it were shipped with debugging symbols, it would be multiple gigabytes in size. And of course, once LibreOffice crashes, the breakpad tool creates a uh, basically a snapshot, if you want, of the state that is uh, run currently. And we don't want anything that could uh, interrupt the current creation of this uh, state. So that's why we don't try to do anything else but just to create this mini dump. So the interaction with the user, whether to report the crash or not, is all deferred to the next launch in order to just not mess with the with the uh, with the state of LibreOffice after it crashed. And so the uh, the prompt that the user gets looks like this. It's so basically a simple confirmation dialog uh, that uh, for each crash ask basically whether you really want to send this information and uh, you can disable the reporting globally in the options then it will never ask and will never send a report but if you have enabled the re crash reporting in the options you will still have the option to not send any report on each occasion and the dialog also has the option to start LibreOffice in safe mode in case it's a problem that is not tied to any actions, but uh, happens every time you launch LibreOffice. So it's another uh, feature that we have in here. And so the user then agrees to send the report and uh, uh, LibreOffice sends the relatively small mini dump file that was created to the server. And the server in quotes cheats a little bit by not processing it immediately, but just assigning an uh, an, a unique ID to the crash report and reports that back to, to LibreOffice. And uh, the user can use that link to go to the crash report site. And from there it has, uh, he or she, them have the option to, to create a bug report providing more information about the crash itself. And hopefully all reporters actually do this because this uh, having a, having steps to reproduce a problem is basically the 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 most important thing that helps QA in, in processing and and judging the importance of, of such a crash. And if you using uh, if you're using the functionality to create a bug report, we make sure to automatically include the necessary information so that both the crash report inside can add a link to the bugzilla ticket as well as having a link from uh, from the bugzilla to the crash report. And yeah, and with that uh, information, hopefully QA has enough information or at least is able to ask the reporter, the, the person having the problem for more information to further track down the problem. And the dialogue uh, with the response basically looks like this. It's very simple. It's just the, the link with the, uh, 
with the unique ID that the user can visit and of course hopefully they do and provide more more details and uh, I said the uh, and to go back to uh, what is actually included in the in the mini dump, I glanced, glanced over it and said it's a snapshot of uh, the state, and yeah, it includes the uh, the files that were loaded, the libraries, and executed. Exec it contain contains the the files that were loaded, the libraries and the executables, and it all co contains all the threads and. Uh, the state of the processor registers and the stack memory at the point of the crash and some, then some additional meter information like uh, the processor uh, used to to run the system the operating system and version and specifically for LibreOffice we also of course include the version of LibreOffice itself and uh, we are also interested in whether OpenGL was enabled or not and what the uh, driver for the graphic card was and what version it was was so we, we include this as additional information in the in the mini dump so next we have uh, the problem of yeah users report uh, the the crashes and what's next and this is basically where qa team comes into into play and um, completely oversimplified qa's role is to monitor the crash reporting side and have an eye on on, uh, on clusters of reports that are new that indicate there was a regression introduced in the latest version and uh, then going the next step further create test cases or at least a reproducible steps by steps and step by step instructions to uh, make help tracking down the source of the problem easier and of course to also be able to verify a fix in the later stages of the process and this is uh, easier said than done of course but yeah and this is easier said than done of course but hopefully the information given in the in the stack trace regarding the the code was was that was affected as well as hopefully having a bug report with some background information about what the user did to trigger the crash will make this a, a little easier uh, and still of course if you, there is no corresponding uh, bug report or even if the if the source code information isn't enough to to help track down the problem or doesn't give you an idea and uh, instead of trying to read hundreds or thousands of lines of code you just want to do the a practical brute force approach you can use a uh, by bisecting and and the bisecting is short for binary bisecting and this just means that we have a, a git repository with the binary builds of LibreOffice for all active branches and you can use the git bisect command to uh, very quickly uh, track down a, a change that caused a, a change in behavior basically and without having to compile a whole version of LibreOffice between each step and uh, the the benefit of is that you can track down a problem without any knowledge about the code itself you just need to a way to reproduce the problem and then anyone with a little disk space to host the repository uh, can basically test one revision after the other and it always uh, basically checks half of the remaining commits and always of that half the other half so it's it narrows down pretty quickly even if uh, the number of commits that you start with is very large the number of steps are probably you know, 10 12 or 15 at most in any case and then you have either a single commit or a few commits that are affected and uh, causing the problem and with that information of course you can uh, have a look at who was doing this commit so what were they trying to fix most often than not they have an old bug report assigned to it uh, with uh, the intent to fix this bug and of course uh, having that information makes it easier to judge what other actions might have caused the regression from him uh, the, the regression to happen and yeah after you have tracked down the problem using a bisect repository uh, even if not knowing what the problem is itself you have someone who committed code touching the area and this of course is a hint uh, 
<laughs> who to poke basically who to nag about the problem or who to ask for more insight and this helps a uh, great ways to to further proceed in getting a fix done for this uh, particular problem and uh, qa while not necessarily doing the actual fix is uh, pretty good at uh, providing test cases to prevent the regression from happening again of course this depends on on the type of uh, problem but it's a, if it's a problem with a, a file format for example it's easy to just add a sample file to the the code and check that uh, the problem doesn't occur anymore and uh, next on uh, some uh, problems or limitations with our current uh, deployment basically and it's hard to say whether it's really a problem or not but uh, of course people don't update to the current version uh, at least not as frequent as we would like them to do and thus we have uh, lots of uh, reports coming in that are from people using old versions of Lira Office with uh, problems reporting uh, that were already fixed in current versions so this of course kind of uh, skews uh, the, the, the overview towards old crashes because yeah uh, the user base of new versions is uh, relatively low or starts growing as time goes on and uh, the old versions are the ones with the problems that are not yet fixed so they're just looking at the raw numbers doesn't give you an indication what is really happening with the current version and uh, the uh, LibreOffice crash reporting website has some filtering options at least the starting page uh, allows you to have a quick overview of how many reports were, were, were committed for each version that is of interest basically the the final release versions and then has an overview of those uh, versions uh, of the reports uh, assigned to that version but if you go deeper then you have all reports from all versions so the 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 filtering capabilities of the django web app could need some love to make it more uh, more usable to be able to exclude versions from the listings for example or just focus on one single version to check whether it was uh, fixed in an, R in an rc for example and not just uh, in the, the the main code line version for example and uh, so far we also didn't remove any old reports from the uh, crash reporting database so of course it grew quite large over the years and uh, while I don't have any immediate plans to, to clear out the old entries at some point, uh, I probably have to do it to keep the size manageable and to, uh, to keep the, the, the database query times uh, in a, on a reason, reasonable level. And uh, another limitation is that it's only available for Windows and Linux, but of course Mac users are relatively uh, small user base compared to windows as well the linux user base is, is small compared to windows users so i don't think it matters too much to not have uh, mac os in there and uh, windows crashes uh, and linux crashes alone are enough to <laughs> to deal with basically there is no lack of uh, reports coming in but uh, Another limitation is, of course, that it only works when you have the corresponding debug uh, information on the server side. And this then in turn means that it's only available for builds that are done by, by TDF, by me basically, and uh, only for the alpha, beta, RC candidates basically. But none of the, uh, of the tender boxes or daily builds have uh, this integration and don't have the crash reporting enabled. And uh, this is basically the technical side of the limitations or problems. And of course, there's the other aspect that I already touched upon that uh, not all users go through the process of filing new information, especially if they don't have a Baxilla account already. This is a big hurdle for them. So they either don't even visit the site to file a, a bug report or they stop there and don't proceed further and also those who do actually file a report it's not clear whether they can provide enough information to have a, uh, have steps to reproduce the problem so still a lot of the burden uh, is uh, is on QA volunteers to basically track it down try to find a way to reproduce it 
try to find a developer who can have a look at what's wrong and uh, it, yeah it's just a, as it goes with all problems people either complain loudly about it or they stay silent and complain about it uh, with their neighbors but not to report it and uh, there's no real easy solution to fix all this because either you make it so easy that every spam bot can abuse your system or you have some login system in place that uh, scares people away so yeah it's always a, a balance you have to take and yeah we have enough reports coming in that i think are now uh, reasonable to act upon even if uh, not everyone can can add a comment and of course having a comment system that allows everyone to comment also gets into the uh, data regulation problems because then you have no control about what is filed and how people would access access this information and how it's shared so having a system that has its own management like Axilla makes it a, a little easier and this basically is it already for the pre-recorded portion of the talk. I'll have enough time for questions, I think. But of course, I don't want to leave without giving thanks and credits where credit is due. And um, most from it is uh, Marcus Mohat, Moggy. He basically uh, did create the system back uh, for LibreOffice 5.2, I think it was 2016. So quite a couple years back, he did the bulk of the integration and wrote the Django web and taking some inspiration from the Socorro, the, the tool that Mozilla was using for their back reporting. And also Nobert Thiebaud had uh, a lot of uh, work done in the infra side of things. He was uh, basically uh, setting up Garrett and other uh, devil rail related stuff uh, back in the day. And then there was also Ricardo Malioketti and I sorry I probably butchered the name uh, Albuquerque Estimir uh, contributing to the server side of things back in the day and yeah of course all wouldn't be possible without having babe, the breakpad utility available so uh, have a link there to their main repository and of course uh, links to our crash reporting site and the and our Bergzilla. And uh, yeah, basically now I'm ready to take questions and uh, switch over to some live mode and maybe can do some live demos if necessary. And of course, uh, thanks to all the, the sponsors making this conference possible. Thanks. Um, I saw a question on the room regarding backtraces not uh, being resolved against the symbols and this was a problem with the symbol extraction step. So the dump sims uh, process uh, did frequently segfault when processing the symbols for Windows 64 bit and our tooling uh, didn't bother to check for any error uh, during this processing. And this has uh, meanwhile been fixed and it uh, should uh, resolve the symbols again. So it was a problem that the uh, debugging information on the server to unwind the symbols wasn't complete and yeah but for current versions it should be uh, all all in the good and uh, of course uh, the old original reports are not resolved but uh, even reports for old versions should now be resolved again since i uh, also updated or re-uploaded the, the the debugging information for old versions And yeah, to add on that, the problem still happens. So uh, the dump sims uh, tool still sec falls frequently while processing the the symbols, but it's just uh, retried until it d does succeed for this uh, given DLL or Excel file and proceed to the next one. So running it multiple times until it succeeds. So I didn't really bother finding out why it crashes or how the crash can prevent it as long as the result uh, of the of a of this of a successful run gives the same result all the time so i'm confident that the data is correct if it's uh, if it works 
and only have to rerun it when, when the process sec falls. And maybe just to show the the crash reporting side as it is now, basically on the landing page, uh, you're seeing the the number of uh, crashes submitted per versions. And uh, the, so the different colored lines represent a single version of LibreOffice. And you see that around 400 to 600 reports are coming in per version. And of course, you see the slow rising lines at the bottom. That is the new releases that uh, slowly gather a user base and still most of the reports are from old versions. If you're actually using it, I'm not sure whether you can see the mouse hover in, in the screen share. There should, you should uh, get a breakdown of uh, the versions and the number of submitted crashes at that uh, specific date. And if you go to the uh, version selector and you can select, for example, uh, the 7162, basically this is the 716 uh, final release and uh, yeah it's a little bit slow for me right now the the demo effect okay now that you see a, a listing of the crash reports and the signatures uh, for that uh, specific versions so for example here you see a skia related one that is uh, happening or was reported 74 times for 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 Windows in the last uh, seven days, so the time frame can be chosen at the top. And if you click on that, you would get uh, to the number of uh, individual submissions, and you can click on one to get basically the 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 stack trace more available. So you see the the function signature and the the source code file where it happens, and also the uh, cross linking to the Baxilla. And clicking on that uh, gives you the, the bug report where you can see the history basically. And it turns out it was an optimization that uses uh, processor features, the AVX uh, instructions, uh, despite uh, not checking for actually support on the hardware. And uh, it was fixed uh, pretty quickly then. And uh, it's uh, fixed for 717 uh, uh, and for 72 branches. And yeah, or just showing at the top the information that the crash reporting side would add. So th this bug was filed from crash report and there you have the idea, the idea of the crash. And this can be used to go back to the crash reporting side to see it. And yeah, this is basically the info you collect. We have the version of LibreOffice, the ID that uh, is used to uniquely identify the, the crash, the processor architecture, the operating system and the operating system version. And yeah, this is basically all this. And 